In the Baki series, there are intriguing and profound characters that deserve to be explored. On this occasion, we are going to analyze one of them, focusing especially on Yujiro Hanma, recognized as the strongest creature on Earth. In this video, we will delve into Yujiro's mindset, morals, and even psychology. So please, take a seat and enjoy the video. In the Baki universe, there's a very interesting character. He is no longer considered human, but rather acknowledged as the strongest living creature on Earth. Yujiro's feats justify this unique title. From surviving alone in war conflicts, to confronting colossal beasts and stopping an earthquake with a single punch, Yujiro stands out for his unparalleled power, even surpassing entire nations in military strength. The US military directly experienced the impressive force of this individual, to whom they eventually had to surrender and agree to a non-aggression treaty. It became an essential requirement for the country that each incoming president must promise to maintain peace and friendship with Yujiro. Due to his incredible strength and ferocity, he was also known as the Ogre. Ogres, mythological beings known for their brutality, have been the source of numerous nightmares and terrifying stories over time, a description that perfectly fits Yujiro Hanma. Since his introduction in the series, Yujiro remains one of the most complex and mysterious characters. Little is known about his early upbringing, his family ties. It has been theorized that he managed to defeat his father, the first man to defeat the United States, but this has not been confirmed. Despite the mystery surrounding him, Yujiro, standing alone at the top of the world, seems to occupy a place made just for him. Despite having everything at his reach, this man has experienced moments of depression due to the lack of a rival that could give him the thrill of a true battle. No one dared to deny him anything. If he wanted something, he simply took it without the thrill of fighting for it. These aspects make it interesting to analyze in depth a character like Yujiro Hanma. So, let's start by examining his morality. Morality is the set of norms and values that guide a society. These principles define what is considered right or wrong. Morality arises from a consensus. Actions such as helping an abandoned animal are seen as good, while crimes like theft are considered bad. It's crucial to distinguish that going against morality involves consciously defying these shared values. An immoral person acts knowing that his or her actions are seen as wrong by others. There's an alternative morality, based on reason and the pursuit of individual happiness, which is autonomous. And then there's the socially imposed morality, which transcends simple notions of right and wrong, focusing more on will and human existence. In this context, we place Yujiro Hanma, I believe his behavior is driven by his immediate ambitions. Everything he desires, he obtains. Power, recognition, victories, basic pleasures, everything within his reach is meant to satisfy him. This type of person doesn't walk down the street with a wallet. He knows that if he wants, he can enter a liquor store, request the most expensive wine, and receive it at no cost. On multiple occasions, he has been seen in luxury hotels receiving treatment comparable to that of a national leader. From his birth, Yujiro showed exceptional survival instincts, demanding attention to his needs and demonstrating unusual strength from an early age. At that moment, the author of the series tries to tell us that Yujiro's arrival in this world could be compared to the arrival of a god who came to live among mortals. Or looking at it another way, Yujiro's birth could be compared to the arrival of a being from another world, a being from a lineage of which little is known. The author portrays him as an untamable force in its purest state, a misunderstood youth who began his quest for strength from an early age. Motivated by his ethics, power, and instincts, it's likely that even in his childhood, Yujiro faced challenges and trained his body as if it were a weapon of war. And it's not that he was forced to face these challenges, he did it for the pleasure of feeling adrenaline coursing through his veins. From an animal perspective, their thirst for power and victory is similar to that sought by a baby shark. From the moment of its birth, these marine creatures, even in the maternal womb, fight to assert themselves and ensure their survival. In this environment, it is determined who will emerge victorious to then dominate the vast oceans. Yujiro adheres to his own moral code because, for most, morality is necessary for socialization and human coexistence. Some realize this when their personal desires clash with social rejection, while others learn by observing the marginalization of those who defy these norms. Whether we like it or not, we need the acceptance of at least a small group. Socialization is a fundamental part of our nature. 
Whether in our workplace, school, or any place where we interact with people in some way, we always seek their approval in the hours. Certainly there are cases where this does not occur, but that is a minority, and Yujiro could be placed in that minority who does not need the social and moral approval of anyone. Today, it is a fact that no being can live in total solitude. We all need to coexist with our species for full development. But for someone with the power of Yujiro, capable of materializing his desires through strength, the pursuit is different. This individual chases his selfish desires and ambitions, regardless of the consequences. He doesn't care if an innocent has to cry for him to smile. His selfish desire for pleasure is stronger than his scarce or non-existent empathy. What Yujiro seeks is power, a power so exquisite that it intoxicates him. For him, no elixir is more appetizing than power. This thought has accompanied him since the moment he decided to leave his home to face the world on his own. For him, life and death had become indistinguishable. In the war conflicts he participated in, he saw hundreds of lives extinguished before his eyes. To him, the lives of other living beings became irrelevant at that point. By the age of 20, Yujiro had reached the pinnacle of both social and physical power. After defeating entire armies by himself, Yujiro's name began to spread around the world, but not through the media or press. His fame grew differently than that of a singer with a hit song or a soccer player with a standout season on their team. Yujiro's fame spread like a myth, a legend narrated by those who witnessed the conflicts he participated in. People whispered about the existence of a man with the power of thousands of soldiers, but it all seemed to be just that, a myth. Meanwhile, Yujiro continued traveling the world, participating in more battles, and facing the most skilled fighters. Now the name both feared and respected, even martial arts masters feared facing him, knowing that accepting his challenge was synonymous with failure. Yujiro's presence, now fueled by myth, was feared, impossible to hide, and his strength so enormous that his feats became mere rumors because they sounded too fantastical to others. The ogre would enter gyms full of professional boxers and beat them up for sheer pleasure. It was like an appetizer before going to a luxurious hotel to dine on a fine piece of meat. His thirst for battle was such that he even dreamed of those moments over and over again. For Yujiro, the essential thing is to seek pleasure in everything he does, while avoiding and repressing feelings like romantic love. For him, women were never one of his vices. The only time he dedicated his time to look for a specific woman was when he sought Emmy to be the mother of his son. In the hierarchy of human desires, there are basic needs like food and sleep, also natural but non-essential desires, like rewarding conversations with friends or family, healthy fun, or carnal pleasure. Beyond these are aspirations like fame, power, and prestige, desires that many pursue throughout their lives but few achieve. But what happens when someone like Yujiro satisfies all these desires with ease? In his situation, he seeks pleasure in more complex ways. For Yujiro, that joy resided in fights. Having become the ultimate fighting machine, there was no army that could match him. But soon, after reaching the top of the world, he was struck by a sad realization. At those high levels of power, he understood that no other human being had even come close to half of his prowess. In other words, there was no one remotely as powerful as him. This reality left him without worthy opponents, incapable of satisfying his insatiable appetite for combat. It's not that he was too strong, but rather that he found no worthy adversaries. Apparently, no one had put the same dedication to becoming strong as he had. Therefore, Yujiro began looking for a woman to be his wife, hoping that a son of his blood would provide him with the challenge he so desires. For example, consider those men who, after dedicating their entire lives to work, finally managed to rest in a vast residence filled with luxuries and comforts. However, at this moment of apparent culmination, they face a desolate revelation. During their arduous journey, they invested so much time in amassing wealth that they neglected to form meaningful bonds with others or build a family with whom to share their existence. In this moment of clarity, they realize a paradoxical reality. They possess everything in material terms, yet find themselves in a profound emptiness, lacking the essentials in life. Another important aspect of this character is his enormous ego. An example of this is seen when he appears in the middle of a fight of a secondary character or in the fights of his son Baki. Every time he appears, he seeks to be seen as a figure of authority, for example, when he interrupts the fight between Mothabe and Yanagi. On that occasion, 
He came to affirm Yanagi's defeat. But when Yanagi questioned him, stating that declaration was not his to make, the ogre expressed his fury by delivering a powerful punch to Yanagi, knocking him unconscious. In his son's fights, he always appears to indirectly tell him that he expects to see something entertaining and not disappointing. He wants Baki to feel the need for paternal approval. However, Baki has challenged him on several occasions and has shown him that he does not need such a thing. On the other hand, it is important to mention that Yujiro does not beat people up for pleasure. If that were the case, he would be walking down the street throwing punches at everyone he comes across. His way of satisfying himself is by fighting and humiliating fighters who believe they are at a high level, for example, those who boast of their power and believe they are the best in their environment. Athletes or martial artists, Yujiro sees them all the same and loves to let them know that no one is above him. The ogre enjoys belittling his opponents and showing them that when they are in front of him, they are all equal. It is clear that the only way to earn Yujiro's respect is through a fight or by actions of high value, where they demonstrate their courage and determination. So far, only four opponents have represented a real challenge for Yujiro. The first was Dopo Orochi. At the time, it was a close fight, and the ogre was forced to activate his demon back. As expected, the ogre totally beat him and won in seconds. However, at that moment, he acknowledged that Dopo had been the first to force him to use this power in a long time, probably since the time he faced the United States. After this fight, Yujiro extended his friendship to Dopo, and from time to time, they can be seen having a beer or walking down the street, talking about their sons like two ordinary parents. The second notable challenge was Kakukayo. Yujiro sought this fight himself because he wanted to prove that he was superior to 4,000 years of Chinese martial arts, and defeating a man with 100 years of experience would be the perfect way to prove it. Although the fight did not have an official conclusion, Yujiro knew he had won and later went to talk with Kaku, expressing his respect for the fight, and also rejected the title of Emperor of the Sea to not seal the old man's humiliation, doing this as a last gesture of respect. Then we have the legendary swordsman Musashi Miyamoto, whom Yujiro considers to this day as the only man worthy of sharing his position as the strongest in the world. Musashi gave Yujiro a short but tough fight. Such was the excitement of that fight that Yujiro felt for the first time that this was not an opponent he could look down on. He was facing a man who had experienced as many or even more savage battles than him. The respect Yujiro has for Musashi has even been represented after the swordsman's second death. On several occasions, Yujiro has used him as an example to portray situations and give advice, for example, when he told Jack that Musashi had said that it is always important to be in a position above your opponent. And finally, his greatest challenge to date is Sambaki. Although initially Yujiro sees Baki as a project, their relationship evolves and Yujiro begins to feel a certain affection for his son. This interest intensifies when Baki reaches a skill level that excites Yujiro, who decides not to devour him so soon, thus allowing Baki to mature and become something more than just a toy. It's as if Yujiro had planted a seed and was waiting for the moment to eat the fruit. This paternal interest leads Yujiro to intervene in Baki's life in questionable ways, seeking to strengthen him and forge his character. He even went further and took Emi's life to give Baki the final blow that would turn him into a man thirsty for revenge. He knew that the only way Baki could give him a worthy fight is if he had a reason to do so, and what better motive than hatred? Despite having the opportunity, Yujiro chooses not to finish off Baki on that occasion, preferring to see him grow even more. As for Emi, it is evident that Yujiro never truly loved her, but rather considered her more as a means to raise Baki. However, it was at that decisive moment when Emi took courage abandoned her obsession with Yujiro, and focused on protecting her son, at which point she earned Yujiro's respect. Finally, the ogre saw her as the woman she always should have been, brave and willing to give everything for the people she loves. On the other hand, there's Diane, whom Yujiro esteemed to a certain degree. However, upon discovering that she was a spy with the mission to eliminate him, his appreciation turned into disdain. What displeased Yujiro was not that Diane hid her identity, but that she considered herself incapable of carrying out the mission alone, and had to resort to the help of the army to achieve it. Yujiro considered the ambush prepared by Diane as an act of coordinates and decided to punish her for it, 
Perhaps if Diane had tried to complete the mission on her own, Yujiro would have respected her more. Other characters have also received praise from Yujiro. For example, Aniyama, who he sees as an equal, Pickle, considered a living treasure, and Oliva Biscuit, respected for his hard effort to reach his current level of strength. All of them are seen by Yujiro as potential challenges, individuals who, with time and maturity, could provide some degree of entertainment, even if minimal. It is also important to mention Jack Hanma. Initially, Yujiro was interested in him, especially for his potential to defeat Baki. However, after Jack's defeat in that fight and his subsequent confrontation with Yujiro, the latter lost interest in him, seeing him as a failure. Over time, Yujiro showed a certain aversion to Jack due to his repeated defeats. But after a period of absence, in which Jack strengthened himself and changed his approach to life, Yujiro began to change his perception of him. Yujiro came to recognize the great effort Jack made to get to where he is now. He even expressed that those who mocked him would not have been able to endure what Jack faced to obtain his current strength. Most surprisingly, Yujiro admitted that he himself would not have dared to do what Jack did, leaving the reasons for his statement open to interpretation by the fans. This leads to the conclusion that even someone as tough and egocentric as Yujiro is capable of respecting those he considers worthy. Yujiro has understood that to preserve his enthusiasm and satisfaction, he must exercise self-control, avoiding hastily consuming everything he comes across. A clear example of this is the development of Baki, whom Yujiro patiently waited for until he reached the necessary strength to offer him a truly entertaining fight. A similar case occurred with Pickle, whom Yujiro decided not to face immediately, opting instead to allow other fighters to measure his skills and help him adapt to the new world he found himself in. Yujiro has shaped himself following a morality that allows him to dominate any rival, ignoring the opinions of others and aware of his invulnerability. The ogre is also capable of feeling love, in his own way and exclusively towards those he chooses, showing it in a very particular manner. Initially, Yujiro was more aggressive and explosive, showing a significant change over time. While he still retains certain attitudes from his youth, he is no longer the sadistic guy we met at the beginning of the series. Probably many think this is not the case after what he said to Mitsunari when he invited him to meet Nomi in the underground arena. However, those were mere words to scare the old man who told him he was getting softer. Personally, I don't believe he would have done the same thing he did to Joe William in the past. These reflections on Yujiro Hanma are based on an analysis of the Baki manga, considering his appearances and the limited information available about him. We don't know much about his father and even less about his mother, nor do we know much about the Hanma lineage. But the reality is that this story still has a long way to go in publication, and probably at some point the author will show us more about the origin of the Hanma family. Yujiro Hanma an iconic character in the Baki series is a fascinating study of morality and psychology in a universe where strength and combat are everything. His morality, if it can be called that, is defined by a constant search for challenges and satisfactions that go beyond conventional norms. Yujiro lives by his own rules, pursuing pleasure and personal betterment, regardless of the cost to others. This attitude has led him to a level of power almost mythical, surpassing any rival that stands in his way even if they are military powers that dare to challenge him. However, this almost sacred power also has its downside. In becoming the most formidable fighter, Yujiro has often found himself without a worthy opponent with whom to fight using his true strength. This lack of genuine challenge has led him to a state of almost depressive dissatisfaction. It could be said that boredom is his penance after reaching the pinnacle of human power. Over the decades, Yujiro's representation has evolved, what started as a more aggressive and explosive character has become a more complex and nuanced figure. This evolution reflects a gradual development, not just in the character but also in the narrative of the Baki series. For being a guy who sought his own benefit, he has become a genuinely concerned father for his children, particularly for Baki, who he acknowledged to keep constantly in his thoughts throughout the day. In conclusion, Yujiro Hanma is a character that defies conventional categories of good and evil. His morality, centered on self-satisfaction and power, makes him a fascinating but enigmatic character. His constant search for a worthy challenge and his complex relationship with his son Baki offer a window into his soul that, 
though dominated by ego and strength, is not devoid of its own form of love and desire for connection. Yujiro represents the embodiment of the Supreme Warrior, eternally in search of a combat that can match his immense power and satisfy his lonely soul. As a final reflection, I would like to say that Yujiro Hama's story in the Baki universe offers a fascinating study of a character whose existence transcends conventional morality and challenges the limits of human power. Yujiro represents the personification of the Supreme Warrior, whose unparalleled strength and autonomous morality place him in an almost mythical sphere. Throughout the series, we see his evolution from a being driven purely by the desire for power and pleasure, to one that shows a deeper and more complex interest in his legacy and in the pursuit of genuine challenges. The central paradox of Yujiro is his insatiable search for a worthy opponent, a challenge that equals his colossal strength, leading him to a kind of existential loneliness. Despite his apparent invulnerability and power, Yujiro faces an internal struggle against boredom and dissatisfaction, a testament that even for the strongest, victory without challenge lacks true meaning. This analysis of the psychology and morality of Yujiro Hanma leaves us with the reflection that, in a world where strength is everything, even the most powerful warrior can find a void at the top. The figure of Yujiro, with his complex interplay of strength, morality, and desire, shows us how even in a universe dominated by physical combat, the deepest conflicts often reside in the soul. Ultimately, Yujiro Hanma is not just a character in a fight story, he is a mirror that reflects the complexities and contradictions of human nature in its eternal quest for purpose and challenge. And well friends, thanks for watching the video, don't forget to subscribe if you liked it. I hope you have a nice day or night. See you soon.